Welcome to Game Foundry Reviews. In this video, we're going to take a look at Tikal. In Tikal, players take on the role of teams of explorers looking to excavate temples in the Central American jungles to find the most treasure. Let's jump right in with the description of the rules, see a few example turns being played, then I'll be back for some closing remarks. This is Tikal set up for a two player game to set up. Each player is going to pick a color and take all figures in that color and put their scoring marker nearby the one space of the scoring track. Aside from that, you're going to sort the terrain tiles by group based on the letter on their back. It's going to be A through G. Then you're going to shuffle each pile, and you're going to form a face-down stack with the Gs in the bottom and the As on the top in alphabetical order. Also, you're going to sort the temple tiles by number and put them in stacks nearby the board based on their number. And finally, you're going to shuffle all the treasure tiles and just form a face-down supply with the golden mask face-up nearby the board. In the rules description example playthrough in this video, we're going to focus on the basic game, but there's also an auction variant which we will talk about briefly before moving on to the example playthrough. In the basic game, players take turns in clockwise order composed of two phases, which are place a tile and use 10 action points. Every time a volcano tile is drawn, a scoring phase immediately occurs for all players, and after the last tile of the entire deck is drawn, there's going to be a final scoring, and whoever has the most points at that time wins the game. So in the basic game, the first part of a player's turn is they're going to reveal the top tile of the deck, and they're going to place it on the board adjacent to some tiles already present. We can see here there's some pre-built ones, so you can't just place it out here in left field. But it has to attach to tiles so it can be reached by at least one of them. Any tile can be reached as long as there's steps leading to it, whether on the tile itself or on a previous tile. So for instance, this tile can be reached from here because there's a step here. It can also be reached from here because there's steps on both tiles. On future placements, though, you can never place a tile like this because there's no steps connecting either of these tiles here. It's okay if there are no steps between a tile, like so, as long as it can still be reached by at least one. So, for instance, this tile can be reached through this step here, but not through here, but that's okay because it can still be reached by at least one tile. The one exception to this is volcanoes. They do not have to be reached by any tile because they just trigger a scoring phase. Nobody can pass through these spaces during the game. Also, if you ever draw a treasure tile, which are these ones here with the golden masks in the center, you're going to put as many treasure tokens as golden masks on the tile. So we can see here there's four golden masks. So we're going to put face down four golden mask treasures right on that space that players will be able to get later in the game. Normally any tile drawn is placed immediately with one exception and that's the volcanoes. When you draw a volcano you're actually going to set it aside and you're immediately going to resolve a scoring phase and we'll explain how a scoring phase works a little later in the video. After placing a tile, the active player can now use up to 10 action points to take actions and all the actions are detailed on your player aid here but we're going to go over each at this time. The first way you could spend action points is to add one of your workers to the board. You can add any of your regular members or your leader. For all game purposes, the leader is the same as the regular members, except he's worth three during scoring, and we'll get to that in a bit. When you add one to the board, you can add it anywhere where you have a camp, not where another player has a camp, or the base camp, and it always costs one action point. So for instance, I could add these three guys right here to the base camp, and that would cost me three action points. The next possible way to spend action points is to move one of your workers, and they can move between adjacent tiles by paying action points equal to the number of steps present. So you can see here there's one step between these two tiles, so this move here would cost one. However, if one of them wanted to move between here, that would cost one two because there's a step on each of these so that would be two here. The only thing to note there is a worker who never partially moved through a tile. They have to go all the way to the next tile. For instance, if you already spent nine action points, you can't go halfway to this tile. You'd have to go all the way or not at all. There's also a special movement action you can take and that's between moving from any camps that you own or from the base camp to one of your camps for one action point. So normally this guy would have to go one, two to go there, but because there's a camp here and there's a camp here, he can instantly move between them. Now if you later had a camp way out on a tile over here, you could also move between your camp for one or all the way back to here for one but you can't move to other players camps for one it's just within your own camps one action point moves one guy Another possible action you could do is to uncover levels of a temple. You have to have at least one guy on a temple space to do a temple uncover action there. And the way you're going to do it is you're going to spend two action points, it costs more than one, and you're going to move to the next numerical temple available. If the next number is not available, you can't take this action. So for instance, if we're out of twos and somebody wanted to uncover here, they cannot ever uncover. They cannot skip to three. It's also important to note you can only uncover one level per worker present, but only a maximum of two. So it doesn't matter how many you want to uncover. If you have two guys there, you can do a maximum of two per tile. You can use all ten of your action points to uncover temples, but you can only do one twice a turn. So this could go two and then all the way up to three here is one turn and that costs four action points. However, I cannot uncover this one further this turn because I've already done it twice. Uncovering treasure works very similarly in that you have to be on the tile itself with at least one guy, but it costs three action points to reveal the top one here. As with uncovering the temple, you can only uncover one treasure per guy you have on a space per turn, but again, a maximum of two. So you can uncover any treasures you want, but only two from one space. So this would be three action points. This would be six. You're going to put these face up in front of you so everybody can see them. The next possible action you can do is actually exchanging these with other players, and that also costs three action points 
per exchange. But you could never break up groups. So for instance, if the black guy had these two here and you had these two here, you could exchange singles between them. But if one player had two of the same type, so if this guy had two face masks, for instance, and it was the black player's turn, he could not break up that group in an exchange. He could only exchange for this one here. It's also important to note that the player you choose to exchange with cannot reject your exchange. You are in control, but each exchange you perform costs three action points. There are two more possible actions a player can perform and they cost five action points each. The first is to establish a camp and you do not have to be on the tile that you want to establish a camp in. You can only establish camps in tiles that do not have other camps. So there's one camp limit per tile and they have to be totally empty or they have to be treasure places that have all the treasure taken off them. So these tiles you can always put camps in, but these ones you can only do once the treasure is totally gone. But to play a camp there, it costs five action points and you're just gonna place your camp there. You are limited to two, so you can only ever build two camps during the game. You can't just keep building them and moving your camps around the board. It's important to understand in that first action we talked about, which is placing guys on the board for one action point apiece, they can be placed in the base camp or any of your camps. So you could just place them here from your supply for one action point each. And the final possible action, which also costs five action points, is to place a temple guard. You can only place a temple guard on a temple, and it has to be on a space where you have the most strength. And remember, your leader counts as three strength, and all your other guys count as one apiece. So for instance, if it was this situation here, we would have more strength than the black player because we would have three, four, five, while well, he would have three. And the way you place a temple guard is you're going to pay your five action points, take one of your guys from that area, and you're going to put them on top of that temple. And then all the other guys from your area here are totally wiped out of the game. They don't go back to your supply, they're back in the box, but nobody else can ever score this temple. You will score it during every scoring, regardless of the number of units present on the hex. However, you can only build two temple guards per game, so you are limited in that respect. I also want to point out if there's a tie for highest strength, for instance, both players have a strength of two here. Neither of them could build a temple guard on their turn. So the game proceeds like this with the player revealing the top tile and placing it on the board and taking 10 action points until a volcano tile is drawn. When a volcano tile is drawn, you're going to set it aside. You're not going to place it on the board. But the player who just drew it is going to take 10 action points as normal without placing this tile and then score their position. Then each other player in clockwise order is going to take 10 action points without drawing a tile and score their position as well. Every scoring phase is composed of two parts, which are scoring the temples and scoring your treasures that you have. The way you score temples is after you take all 10 action points of your turn. Remember, you're only going to score individually yourself after your own 10 action points, and the other player is going to do the same thing. You're going to gain as many points as for each temple you have the highest amount of power on. So for instance, if this guy had three and this guy had two, after he took his 10 action points, he would get four points because that's the value of the temple here. Also, if you had a temple guard, it doesn't matter who's in the spot, you're going to score those points at that time, and nobody else could score them during their own turn. Also for treasures, you're going to gain different points based on the different number of sets you have. Every single treasure you have, meaning you just have one of that treasure type is worth one point. For every pair or two of one type, you get three points. And if you have triplets of a type, you get six points for that type. The only other thing to note here is back with temples, and that's that your leader is worth three. So for instance, if it was the orange player's turn here, he would actually score the four points. And again, you do not score any points if there's a tie. So if this was the orange or black player's turn, nobody would score this. After everybody's taken their 10 action points and scored their position, then we go back to the guy who drew the volcano tile. He's gonna place it on the board wherever he'd like. It doesn't have to connect to other tiles in that. You don't have to have legal walkways, so it could be here. But then they're gonna take their turn as normal, and everybody's just gonna continue drawing tiles and taking their 10 action points. Once the very last tile of the deck has been drawn, there's going to be a final scoring phase that works exactly like the other scorings, except it's going to begin with the next player in clockwise order. So if Orange drew the very last tile of the deck, he would draw the tile, place it, take his 10 action points, and then the black player would take 10 action points and score their position. Orange player would take 10 action points and score their position. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Before moving on to the example playthrough, I do want to cover the auction rules of the game. So first things first, you're going to start with 20 points a piece and you're going to bid your points to place tiles each turn. At the beginning of every round, you're going to reveal as many tiles as there are players who are a two-player game. So we're going to reveal the top two tiles. And players are actually going to bid a certain amount of points on how much they want to take to go first. So for instance, this player would bid, they might bid five, and this guy would have to bid higher or pass. If you bid higher, it continues until all but one player have passed. Once all but one player have passed, the player that bid the highest is going to lose that many points, takes the tile, places it on the board, and takes a normal turn, just like during the regular game. 
Whoever didn't buy it would get uh, the next tile and there would be another auction phase. So if there were three or more players, we would auction again to see who picks the second and then the third and so on. But when there's one tile left, whichever player didn't buy anything is going to get that tile for free, is going to place it and take a turn for free. It's important to note that a player can only buy one tile per turn. So even if this guy wanted to bid on the second tile after already buying the first, placing it and taking their turn, they could not do so. So everybody is going to get to place one tile as normal. There is one special case when all players pass, nobody wants to bid anything. Whoever passed first is going to take the first tile, choose whatever they want, place it on the board and take their turn as normal. Volcanoes work the same way in that once a player chooses a volcano, so for instance, let's say it was a three player game and people are bidding and the winner chooses to play this volcano, he's going to set it aside, take his 10 action points, have a scoring phase. It's going to proceed clockwise. Everybody takes their 10 action points and scores. And then that player is going to place this volcano on the board as normal. Aside from that, every round after all the tiles have been drafted in place, you're going to reveal a new amount of tiles equal to the number of players. You're going to repeat the process until the deck runs out. Once all of the turns have been taken, a final scoring is going to occur just like normal, except the final scoring is going to occur in reverse score order. So the player with the lowest score is going to take their 10 action points and do their final scoring first, then the second lowest, and so on. And just like the basic game, whoever has the most points at this time wins. Let's go in with this example play through. The orange player is going to go first, so the first thing they're going to do is reveal a tile from the deck and place it on the board so it can be accessed by at least one tile. He's going to go ahead and place this tile right here. Now he can use up to 10 action points to do various things on the board. First, he's going to place his leader for one, then he's going to place some more guys for two, three, four. Now he decides to move some guys. It's going to be five, six here, because each of those was one, because there's only one space between them. Then he's going to go seven, eight, nine, and he decides he's going to bring one more guy for 10. Now the black player is going to take a turn, so he's going to reveal a tile, and he's got this one here. It's a treasure tile. He's going to put it here, so it's a little bit hard for that guy to access it because there's two steps there. Because there's four golden masks, we're going to put four treasures on it, and now he's going to take a turn just like that. He's also going to begin with placing his leader for one. He's going to bring out some guys, two, three, four. However, now he's going to move his leader, five, six, and now he can spend three to uncover a treasure. So he's up to nine, and he'd love to do another treasure, but he doesn't have enough action points, and he only has one guy on this tile. You have to have one guy per treasure recovered. Also, you can only do a maximum of two per tile. So for his 10th, he decides he's just going to move one guy to the center here. The orange player is going to take another turn just like that, but we're going to jump ahead a little bit later in the game so you can see some more interesting situations. Welcome back. We've progressed a bit in the game. It's now the orange player's turn, so he's going to draw the top tile of the deck, and he gets a volcano. He does not place the volcano on the board this time. He's going to set it aside, and the scoring phase is going to begin. So as normal, he's going to take his 10 action points for his turn, and he's going to score at the end of it. So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to go one, because there's a space here, and this costs three, so he's going to reveal this. So he's at four action points used, and then he's going to go five, six by building this a little deeper, seven, eight. He's all the way up to nine. He can't go any further. He can't go to 10 because he's already did it twice this turn, even though he has three guys there. So he has two action points left. He's going to use one to move here. So that's nine to create a tie with this guy. And for his 10th, he's just going to bring a new guy into his camp here. Remember, you can do the base camp or any of your camps. So now that he's used 10 action points, he's going to score. So first, we're going to score all of his temples that he has the most strength in. So here, he clearly has the most strength. So that's one point. Here is nine. So that's going to be 10 points. Here is 11. And then over here, he's tied. So nobody's going to get anything there. So he gets 11 points for temples. So we're going to move accordingly on the track here. And then for his treasures, he's going to get one point, one point because he has two singles. So that's going to be two more points. And now the black player is going to take a turn with 10 action points without drawing the tile. And then they're going to score their turn. After the black player finishes scoring his position, then the orange player is going to take that volcano they set aside and place it on the board and take a normal turn with 10 action points. The game is going to proceed like this. We're going to jump ahead to the end of the game so you can see the final situation. Welcome back. We're now at the end of the game. The black player just played the final tile and took his 10 action points as normal. So we're at the final scoring phase. I also want to point out this temple was capped by the orange player. So nobody except the orange player can score it during scoring. And he always scores it, even if he has less guys on the space. That's why nobody's here. Also, when you cap a tile, it can never be dug further. So for instance, if it was capped at nine, it could not have been dug to 10. But this tile has been capped. And remember, when you cap it, you have to have the most guys in the space. Leaders count as three. And all the other guys in the space are wiped out. They're back in the box. You cannot redeploy them later in the game. So now it's the orange player's turn before final scoring, so he gets to take his 10 action points. First, he's going to go one, two, then he'll move here for three. Then to be a bit defensive, he'll go four, five, and he'll cap this area because he has the most guys here, which is one, and all the rest of his guys are wiped out. Remember, you can only cap two per game. So that's all of his actions. So now we're going to score his position. So first, he'll get six points for his group of three then three for his groups of two. So there's two groups of two here. So that's another six. That's 12, 13, 14, 15 points. Then we're going to score all of his temples on the board. 
So we'll start down here with this one, and with that he'll get seven, because clearly he has the most there, and then he'll get eight over here, and seven, and so on. The other player will take a turn just like this, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. TCAL is an older game that won the Spiel des Jahres in 1999, which is when it came out, but it still holds up well today. It's a game that can be played well with casual gamers or harder core gamers, because it can be very strategic, but it's not that difficult to understand what to do. There can be some players who are extremely AP prone in this game, that is analysis paralysis prone, because 10 action points is a lot to use in a turn, so some people are going to have some struggles with that. But in general, the game doesn't take that long on a player turn, and I think it definitely gets better with more players, because then there's more people you're competing with to get those temple points, and I think that's what makes it really interesting, whereas in a two-player game, you're kind of just, one person has the points or one person doesn't. Also, the way the scoring turns work make for really interesting uh, opportunities to score, because you essentially score after your own turn, so you can either Either kind of protect yourself so other people can't score in certain areas or sort of be very aggressive and score in lots of things but other people may also score them because they're gonna get their turn before the scoring when you first play I don't see any reason to use the auction rules but as you get more familiar with the game the auction is a very nice addition because then you start to understand the value of placing things at different times in the game so I would recommend trying that out and it keeps the game interesting for a long time to come so if it looked neat to you check it out that's TCAL